what can the CFO inside TV? Bank to leveraging coupled with strong corporate earnings and a flush bond market have created a situation, um, a bifurcated situation for many CFOs. They either face a bit of liquidity crunch or huge cash cushions piling up on their balance sheets. Professional services firm Ernst & Young are launching a new report looking at how CFOs can deal with either situation. And with us in the studio is Les Clifford. He's a partner with Ernst & Young and a senior leader of the CFO program. Hello, Les. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Um, the, the report, it's titled Drown, uh, Drought or Drowning. Yep. It's, a, it's a strong image. Yeah. Is the situation really that crass? I think, I think what you do see you know, is that many companies are building up surplus cash. And it's been commented both in the market and also in the journalism and press. But I think one thing that you also see is that there are other companies now really struggling to actually raise the cash that they need to develop, to grow going forward. So yeah, there's extremes in the marketplace. Well, um, let's take a look at the um, cash rich companies first. Yeah. And um, for many of them, um, share buybacks are uh, very popular. Do you think um, these buybacks are a sign of option, of, of, of a clear choice, or is it a sign of desperation? I think it's anything. I think, I think generally you see in most businesses, they've got three choices. And some markets, they are looking at companies holding cash, and the shareholders are saying, actually, we think we could do more with that cash. Um, so often the buyback is one of the questions, you know, just give us, the shareholders, the money back. I think one of the other ones would be actually looking and saying, well, actually, we could invest that money into our existing business. And now put into your existing business to make your business more efficient. Uh, make it more efficient might actually create more cash. Or actually you invest that into potentially new markets. So I think companies have choices. But I think one of the key things in the market just now is actually are the CFOs, are the boards communicating that message to its shareholders and to the city and to the investors what they're going to do with that cash. And do you have the feeling that CFOs are communicating that in um, a good fashion? Are investors understanding their reasons for doing that for uh, the share buybacks? I think what you're now really seeing is for people to really think about it. I think before it's been a question asked. You know, people talk about what's your investment strategy. People say what's your M&A strategy. But I think those are sort of all parts of the same question is, well, you are generating cash flow. You're being very successful. We as shareholders want a return on our investment. So where are we going to get my best return? So please tell me how you're going to invest my cash that you're holding on to. Um, so I think they do have to get better at communicating it. And certainly when you see companies now talking, they are talking about their cash, they're talking about buybacks. But I think more clearly, what is their investment strategy for that cash going forward? And when you speak to the investor relations within some of the large organizations, this is one of the key messages, is this is not about selling the company, it's communicating with your investors as to what you're going to do with that cash, or surplus cash. Um, let's now take a look at the, um, at the cash poor companies. And one recommendation in your report is that um, CFOs should communicate bad news as early as possible to build up trust with their lenders. Um, however, it, when a CFO communicates too early, he might um, attract some unwanted and even unnecessary scrutiny of their business model. How do you think can CFOs navigate that sort of dilemma? I think what you want to avoid is crisis management. I think that's where the report's really driving at, is that sometimes people always believe around the corner it's going to get resolved, around the corner it gets resolved. So what happens is you then end up in a position whereby you are trying to raise funds based off a crisis. You know? And then it's not good for shareholders, it's not good for the company, and a lot of the company's focus then is based on fundraising, fundraising, fundraising. You know, most companies should be based on their strategic direction. It should be, where's our next product? Where's our next markets? So I think what we're, what we're clearly trying to say is that companies, when they think they need to raise funds in the current environment, should go to the market or go to their lenders and say, you know, this is what we need to do. This is where we see the future. And actually embrace them in your business and actually let them understand what you're, you're looking to do. And actually make them a partner more than just purely a lender. So if they are a partner believing in your business model and how, you, how to drive that business, much better doing it then than being in a crisis position. And I think with many lenders, that also gives them the confidence that you know, you're not hiding bad news. A lot of companies are very good at, a lot of banks or sort of lenders are good at looking at the market. They're probably making their own views on those companies already. 
So sometimes actually coming together and talking about it actually breaks down the perceptions. And that sometimes reality is not as bad as you think it is. And that there is willingness to fund and support the company there, but based on trust and integrity and honesty. Um, one other important um, strategy for CFOs to raise companies, especially within a cash strap um, company, is to improve working capital. And the report recommends moving from sort of tactical to operational working capital management. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a great recommendation, I think. It sounds good, but this involves a huge effort on part of the CFO and maybe the entire company. Um, how can a CFO make sure that this effort will actually be worthwhile for um, the managerial resources he will have to put in there? Right. One of the critical elements here is you've got to size the prize. You know, at the end of the day, you, know, you can go into belief thinking we can raise lots of money by doing lots of working capital, strategic working capital. If the prize isn't there, then stop. So the first thing I would say is take your time to size the prize. I think a lot of companies have gone, what I call the very tactical stuff. You know, they've gone in looking at their debtor days. They've gone looking at their infantry provisioning. What we're really saying to a lot of companies is actually going right back into your supply chain. You look at your supply chain. Look at where money and cash effectively is being tied up. And can you make improvements into that supply chain to accelerate the flow of cash either in or to further cash going out? And actually, it's one of the things which we've said in the report is actually sometimes one of the best sources of your supply chain working capital is the large corporates who are sitting on cash. Because one of the challenges to the large corporates who are growing is continuity of supply chain. So if, you, if you're a supplier to a critical corporate, then have you sat down with them and said, actually, you know, for us to be more efficient and effective, to have this, not luxury, but actually have a better arrangement between us on our working capital can support us and guarantee you continuity of supply, but also make us more efficient and effective to provide you with a better product. Um, we're already approaching the end of our interview, um, and I would like to ask you three questions now, um, three yes no questions, okay. so please answer with yes no um, if possible. <laughs> I will try. Will share buybacks continue to be a popular option um, for CFOs? No. Um, will cash piles on balance sheets continue to rise? Yes, in the short term. I have to caveat And will uh, CFOs be successful in implementing working capital programs? Yes. Thank you very much, Les Clifford, Ernst Young, and thank you for watching.